What is up, captains and cadets? I did it. I grabbed a mining ship. I want to talk about why I grabbed a mining ship, and I want to talk about a couple more things about the mining ship. Let's do this. Let's go. What's up, muds, onies, and oosters? Oh, sorry, my voice is a little jacked up. I got to see my favorite band, Goose. They're playing in the background of this video. I love that band. I saw them last night. I'm gonna see them tomorrow. Really great weekend ahead of me. Um, but I got my mining ship. Woo! -hoo! Anyway, um, yeah, here's a little. Uh, so this is what I bought. I bought the Armstrong Imp Tip. It's the smallest of the three Armstrong mining ships. Uh, I. I love this thing, it's pretty cool. Um, here's all its components, we'll go back to that in a second. Um, I, uh, this is the video I put out just recently, it's called Claim Stakes vs. Mining Rigs. If you haven't seen it, um, I made it just a few days ago, I made it on the 4th of July. But uh, one of the members of the community just, um, just made a comment on it, I really appreciate comments. If you guys make a comment down below, I try to answer every single comment. Um, but this one's from Metaverse OG, and he said, FYI, Star Atlas is a mining game. Not buying a mining ship is a fat mistake. And this kind of sat with me, because I, I thought about it, I was like, it's not really a mining game, but the, the more I thought about it, the, at least the first you know, the first rollout, the first maybe year or so, it, it pretty much is, that's what it is. It's a mining game. I kind of thought about it as like space simulation flying game and stuff like that. But when we think about Sage, that's a strategic mining game for sure. So I was like, wow, I really, really need to jump on this, you know, the, the mining ship uh, aspect of this game. So that's why I grabbed it. And just about, I don't know, maybe about five hours ago, I bought the ship. And you can see I have three um, uh, tier one claim stakes right here. And this is, I, I cleared them out. So I cashed in all my R4. And this is about how much three of them made in the past five hours. 1K, 2K, you know, roughly another 1K, 1K. And I, at the exact same time, I had bought this imp, and you can see it's like, you know, five times the amount that it, that three of the uh, tier one claim stakes are putting out. So I'm really excited about that. Everyone could use R4 these days. So, um, oh, I wanted to show you guys just in case. Um, I did put a um, in my last video. I showed what it looked like, but um, this is what it looks like when you um, put it into the faction claims. Uh, this is it producing. You could. You could actually see for each of the R4, 15.77 per minute. It's emitting food and, you know, 15.49 fuel on and on. You can kind of read it off the screen right here. So it's pretty cool how fast. This is just the smallest of the three imps and how fast it's putting out uh, R4 for us. I love it. All right, so the Armstrong Imp Tip ship. Why did I buy it? Well, I am not a strategic gamer by any means or a PC gamer, I should say. I'm more of a console gamer and I play console games. I play Xbox all the time with my son and I, you know, play a bunch of Xbox on my own. Um, so PC gaming and strategic gaming is going to be very new to me. I have to learn a lot about it. And a lot of people that are out there in the Star Atlas community are super skilled at strategic gaming. And I only know this from listening to the Atlas Brew and the questions that people ask. So I'm totally going to go into this as an under underdog. And so any Anything I can give myself a little bit of an edge against uh, the very skilled players, I think, is a good idea. And so that's why I grabbed the the mining ship right here. Uh, the first um, the first part of wreck doesn't seem like it could be too dangerous. I don't think there's going to be player on player combat, from what uh, we can understand. Uh, but uh, the the, uh, the in the meantime, I think that having an Armstrong imp tip is still going to be super helpful because it's going to be you know help um, mine those asteroids, which is going to be the main part of our mining and crafting loop that we have to play we have to mine the asteroids and bring the r4 back to our star base and craft different things that's going to help our our um our ships progress and our star bases progress and give ourselves some r4 so i'm hoping that this armstrong imp tip is a lot faster than the ships and it uses a lot you know doesn't use any ammo or anything like that so it's going to save a little r4 in that sense and I'm hoping that it might help me if there's some bonus rewards out there. Let's just say there's some Atlas out there or some type of uh, tank ship that the Armstrong imp tip will, you know, make things a little, expedite things a little bit faster for me. So uh, one other little daydream I keep thinking about is, is that last video I had mentioned that I had mentioned the Tufa Feist. And the Tufa Feist is a ship that has a living organism half implemented into it. it and it's the Tufa alien race and it's so it's a hybrid between a 
machine and a living being, and this Tufa Feist ship can disguise itself as an asteroid. And I had mentioned in the last video, imagine a mining rig coming up to one of these Tufa Feists going to mine it, and then the Tufa Feists all of a sudden just like expands into uh, the ship and just annihilates this poor defenseless mining ship. So then I had this this other thought. I was this almost cooler thought. I was thinking, what if you what if you grab a whole bunch of these Tufa Feists if you can afford them? Like a whole bunch of them to escort your mining rig around. And then while your mining rig is mining on an asteroid, you can disguise all your Tufa Feist set, like go into asteroid mode and just kind of float around disguised as other asteroids. And then lo and behold, some person is flying around and they have their like little, I don't know, their, their little uh, extra small ship. And they're like, oh, look, a mining rig. I can totally take that guy out, blow him up and grab the resources for, uh, after blowing up the ship. Um, well, the guy kind of flies in, and like, this is what would happen, right? The guy would kind of fly in, and all of a sudden, whoosh! You totally trapped him, right? So like, what, like your two for feist would all of a sudden, that you have uh, guarding your, your mining rig would just be like, whoosh! But not just one, it would be like, boom, boom, two, three, boom, 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 four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, snap, man. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Nothing's left of that person but space dust. Oh, I love it. Anyway, um, one thing I wanted to talk about is I don't know what the new game, maybe someone does know out there and they can comment down below. But um, if you remember how we were just playing Escape Velocity, you can move like one, two, three, four, five spaces. Um, I remember Chiptoe talking way back in one of the old, um, it was either a town hall, but I, I actually really think it might have been one of the old uh, Atlas Brews. He had mentioned that you are going to need to, when you put your fleet into the game of Sage, at least one of the future games of Sage, they're only going to be able to move as fast as maybe their sub warp or their warp goes. Um, let's see, where's the, uh, so here we go. So we go back to the Armstrong Imp. We can see that it has a small warp drive and it has a where's oh and an extra small sub warp engine so if you're going to escort the ship around in the future i believe you can have something faster than it but you, can, you don't want to have something slower than that so if you're going to buy a mining ship in the future make sure that you can afford another small ship or you already have another small sh at least another small ship in your inventory to be um, escorting this guy around and probably be maybe better to have more than one ship uh, just to make sure that he's safe out there but uh, that's, that's all theory crafting. I've, I'm not too sure. So, again, this guy has one small warp drive, one extra small sub warp engine. And if we go to the Tufa, that I was saying it would be really cool to escort it around. If we go to the Tufa, you can see that it's got an extra small warp drive. So it wouldn't, but it has a medium sized sub warp engine. So it's faster when you're just on the uh, on the map, like you're just going around the map. Let's just say. Um, Say extra small ship can move one space, a small ship can move two. I mean, extra, extra small one, extra small two, and then maybe a small ship can move three spaces. I don't know if that's going to work, but I'm just saying. Now the Tufa has a medium, so it can even go one faster, but I'm assuming that they would both be able to, you know, you can click and like, you can move them both just like the three slots, because uh, that, that's just, again, I'm just guessing on how it might work. So, so this guy would be all right on the, just going around the map, but then when it comes to warping from, um, maybe one gate to the other. I'm not too sure exactly how the warp drive would work in Sage. It might, it would be slower, obviously. So maybe a better fit. I was looking at like the piers here. Um, this has a medium warp drive, so it's a faster faster warp, but it has the same size uh, sub warp engine. So it would go the same speed as that mining ship on the map. And then maybe even a better fit might be um, this Fimble Bio Serp. And the reason I say that is it has a really fast sub warp. So, you know, you can hopefully keep it slower along with the, the ship and it has the same size warp drive, but then check this out, it has two medium size fixed hard points. So it's hard points uh, are, are larger than the size of the ship. So it, it has quite a bit of firepower. So it might be a really, and it's I think it's only like a hundred bucks right now. So it's a, a very a fairly inexpensive ship that you can buy along with your, your mining ship if that's the way you want to play it, not financial advice. Um, the Tufas, I just, I, I just want to talk about uh, the components of the ships. They've all we all know that they've been reorganized, and I was I was actually making a video on it, and then this is what happened. 
So I've been pouring my heart out into this video I want to make about uh, the new ship stats and the new components on all the ships. And uh, Metaverse Explorer threw out his video and then the thumbnail it says new ship stats. And I was like, oh, that's it. I'm bailing on making that video because he's got 8,000, 8.7, 7,000 subscribers. I have 138. I'm teeny tiny. No one's going to watch my video after they watch his video, I was thinking. But then after I finally did get around to uh, checking out his video and I was like, and he didn't talk about ship stats like most of the video. And I was like, what the heck's going on? I thought this video was about ship stats. And uh, at the very end, he kind of just did a, a little bit of a read through on um, going over this new Star Atlas lore wiki. And he just went down to the ship configurations and was kind of just was like reading some stuff. It seemed a little unprepared on it and stuff like that. And then he says this over here. All right, he starts out good, but then hold on around it a bit and as you can see here these are the make components variances so if you have a ps ship you will generally have a neutral shield generator so zero is if you're a medium ship then you will have a medium shield generator for hull reinforcement you'd have a medium hull reinforcement but if you have a ps ship and you have a warp drive then you will have a one class higher warp drive that's what this that's what this says okay we can look at the calico it has no benefit for shield generator or warp and it also has a negative for hull reinforcement so then the calico is actually not that great i would say because at least what wait say that again reinforcement so then the calico is actually not that great i would say because so anyway this is what he was talking about these components right here and he's like oh you know the calico's not that great and stuff like that but he didn't scroll over man you can scroll over and everyone has a negative and everyone has a one so the calicos actually have which one's the calico? It's the fourth one down right here, I believe. Yeah, so the calicos have an awesome heat sink. So the, what the heat sink is, is a, uh, the heat sink is, is, is a stealth. So the calicos have awesome stealth. So yeah, it might not be that strong, but they can, they're, you know, able to sneak around, which is going to be really good for the rescue ships to be able to sneak by people and rescue people. Oh my gosh, you scared me. Like <laughs> them. <laughs> he, he just used stealth to scare me. Um, so, Tufa right here, uh, we were just talking about the Tufa ships. They're one of the only ones that have, most of the ships all have one bonus and one negative, right? But the Tufas have two bonuses and two negative strikes against them. Whereas the the Rainbow, which is the Rainbow line, is the Fatali alien race um, technology involved. They have, they have three negatives and three bonuses. So... We'll go over that in my future video when I'm going to go over um, ship configuration. If you guys would care to watch that in the future, um, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and uh, we can we can talk all about that. I'm pretty excited. I really um, I really poured a bunch of a bunch of time into checking all this out. I, I, I'm excited about the new ship configurations. Um, but one more thing I just want to talk about before we go under makes and specs right here you um we have an overall um ship make bonuses and what i what i found was very useful on this chart is if you scroll all the way over it gives you an overall rating on each ship on each um ship line so we were talking about the armstrong ship again it's this line right here we scroll over you can see that they have a 44 average so they're not the worst they're not the best they're kind of like they're they're on the lower end of the middle um, as far as their overall rating. And we were just talking about the Tufas. So they're third up from the bottom. And if you look at the Tufas, they're a 51. And if you look all the way down the line, the Tufas are a pretty savage ship. Um, they second to the rainbow line right here. So uh, so if you don't have a Tufa or one of the rainbow ships in your inventory or portfolio, however you want to call it, it might be something you want to save up and maybe get in the future because they seem like they have some really good specs behind them. Again, we'll talk about that in my next video. Um, Eli just wanted to help out on the very end. We're just gonna do a little cut to that and we're gonna say adios, I'll be right back. Hey guys, so Eli heard me making this video and he wanted to say hi. Hi. And he heard me playing this trailer. <clears throat> Somehow I never showed him this trailer. So now we can get like a reaction for the end of my video. We can get a reaction of what Eli thinks of this trailer and you can, uh, you can tell us what you think, buddy. I can't believe you've never seen this before. Those are some pretty blue eyes. Are they purple? I don't know. Oh. There's an explosion caught in her eye. Miles, the station reported a distress signal last Story? night. Story? Yeah. I think it came from this your dad's ship. That signal 
It came from past the outer ring. How is that even possible? This ship has been reported missing for 20 years now. Pretty sure he's not coming oh, back. Oh, that's an awesome shot. Yeah, that's the deep flu that ship. That's a Lloyd liner. We go there. We might not come back. This kind of sounds like Freddy from Pranef's security breach. What is this place? We have the Oosters, the Mud, and the Oni, right? This is going Three to change factions. everything. What the faction did you pick? Do you remember? I think I picked the robot dude. Yeah, you picked the Ooster. Let me turn this down a little bit. Okay. They found out we have the map. They're gonna kill us for it. Oh, that's an awesome robot. Yeah. I don't know what that robot's about. The robot's my favorite character so far. <laughs> right here, look at this. Uh, I was talking about this in the video. It's kind of like the Star Wars thing. It's pretty cool, right? Yeah. What do you think? It, there's a little ending, too. I think that's awesome. Wait, that Star Atlas logo is the thing that I did for that th thumbnail that I made that's for like a special video that we haven't used yet. Yeah. Look Whoosh. I like explosions. Pretty They're pretty cool. cool. Huh? Yeah. All right. Jinx. <laughs> All right. Say bye, buddy. Bye. For Beyond the Horizon. Please, Please like and sub. Y your voice just cracked terribly. All right. Let's try this okay. again. Please like and subscribe. Blam, blam.